Sicilians. They occurred in this city. Weekend after weekend after weekend, those students, citizens in a country they don't recognize as one that gives them equal rights. <coughs> those children sat in at those lunch counters. And you know, there came a moment when the city fathers are saying to themselves, you know, it's it's spring. Come June, they are going home, about half of them. This will be over. It'll never start again. Meanwhile, business downtown was suffering. There was violence. The students were thrown in jail. They stayed in jail. Some of them were beaten, spat upon, cursed. They took it, and they never struck back. And then, one morning, they wake up, and Easter is approaching. The violence has resulted in many white people who live in the suburbs. There were no shopping centers in those days. All shopping was downtown. But people are a little nervous about coming downtown because there's been violence. There's been disruption. All these children going to jail. And now some white children have joined the black children and going to jail with them. And suddenly the students at Fisk and Tennessee State and American Baptist say, why don't we, during the Eastern season, see if we can get people shop, stop shopping downtown until they change their policy, and they do that. And there was such great support for that. And by the third week, the owners of department stores are looking for a way, hoping for a way, that they can change their policy, and suddenly, a great African-American lawyer named Z. Alexander Luby, he and his wife were at home one night during that Easter season, and a bomb explodes. A Klan bomb had been planted in the front of their house, blew the house off its foundation. They were rushed to the hospital, thank God, not injured, and they survived. And that day, a silent march began at Tennessee State and wound downtown to the front of City Hall where Mayor Ben West had met with him. You know, we didn't have cell phones or um, email in those days. They had to send the mayor a telegram asking him to meet him. And he came out and met with him. And in one moment, a beautiful young Fisk Jr. named Diane Nash said to him, Mr. Mayor, is it right, is it morally right for the owners of these businesses to sell us shoes and clothing and books and appliances and not let us have a seat at the lunch counter to buy a number? And Mayor Ben West was an honest and honorable man. He listened to the honorable question of that young girl and he answered her. Honestly. No, he said, it is not morally right. I don't know the story, but it's not morally right. And the mayor gave those department stories. The crutch they needed to lead on to change their policy, and within three weeks, the walls of segregation in those department stores became crumbling. The following year, they had stand ins at the movies and change came. And then that year, there were freedom rides that began in Washington and came across the South. And finally, the bus that was taking them was bombed and burned, and the people who were aborted were mauled and beaten, hospitalized, could not continue. And so these Nashville sit-in students, imagine this, they said, we will not let violence overcome nonviolence. And so they go, they go to Alabama. They go to Alabama knowing the dangers that are ahead. They go to Alabama and take up the freedom rights. And they are beaten and assaulted. And 16 of them 
were expelled, I'm sorry, 14 of them were expelled from Tennessee State University for participating in those free runs. I look back on that time and I, and I, I get it again. I wonder why it took us so long to realize the indignity, the indecency, the injustice that our community and the South, much of the country, inflicted on our fellow humans.